Hi, this is Daryl. Welcome to week four. We're here at the end of the class. I'm glad to see everybody. Um, first off, I want to deal with uh, a mistake that I made. Uh, the the uh, 3.4 uh, project was supposed to be due last night, Sunday. I had talked about that all week. That's what I intended. However, on the FSO site, I made a mistake and had it do uh, showing up as being due to, tonight. So I'm no Indian giver. I left that in place once I discovered the mistake. I just didn't mention it to anybody. Uh, I realized that when last night I didn't receive a whole lot of requests for an extra extension. So officially, uh, the 3.4 assignment is closing tonight uh, at midnight, and that's open to everyone. Uh, it was meant to be closed the day before, so we're giving everybody a little bit extra grace. No problem there. Most of you did turn in the assignment uh, last night, and I have been grading uh, on them today. The grading is a little bit slower. Uh, this is the project where I take a little bit more time and give everybody uh, more individual feedback, so I don't get feedback to everyone right away. Uh, if you haven't gotten your feedback yet, uh, don't worry, it will come. You may get it later tonight. You will get it tomorrow. Those of you that take advantage of the extra day deadline and turn it in uh, tonight at midnight uh, should probably also uh, end up getting your feedback back tomorrow sometime. So it's important for me to get my feedback back to you so that you can keep going forward. That's what this week is all about. Feedback. I'm going to say that word a whole lot this week. Um, this is the last week, and what we're going to be doing this week is working on making the uh, project better, enhancing it based on the information we receive. And this is um, um, part of Nancy uh, Nancy Nancy's uh, plan that everything is based on feedback. That every aspect the work that you do can be reviewed and made better. So um, we're coming to the end of the four weeks here. It moves pretty fast, doesn't it? And so this is the last week, and this is the week where we're kind of winding down, uh, where we wound down in the reading as well. We have only one last chapter from Resonate to read, and that chapter, uh, fittingly, deals with feedback. So that's the theme of this week. Uh, your main task this week is to think about the project that you did last week, reflect upon it, and figure out ways that you can make it better. My feedback to you is one aspect of that. Uh, hopefully, you will also have posted your project in the discussion board for your classmates to see, and your classmates will participate in giving you uh, useful feedback as well. So we're gonna learn today about both giving and receiving feedback. Uh, they're an important part of being a constructive artist and there are actually uh, you know, rules for how to do it. So we're gonna think about that. And we actually have an additional assignment this week in, so that you can have practice giving people feedback. We used to make that assignment that you guys gave each other feedback. But uh, it turned out that sometimes when people didn't participate, then we were actually depriving the student of you know, uh, his or her chance to be critiqued if the other student didn't show up. So there's nothing we could do about that. Uh, and we, we took that out of the uh, uh, equation. But it is an important part of the process that you learn not only how to receive feedback and, and, and uh, work your way through it as regards to your own project, but that you're able to capably give feedback to others. And so uh, there, there, we have a project that, that uh, allows you to do that and makes that something that um, isn't affecting current students, but is, is, is part of your training. And we'll, we'll talk about that 4.3 as well. So uh, I want you to finish the last of the reading. It's just a single chapter and then we'll say goodbye uh, to Nancy Duarte and, and her thoughts 
but I hope you're carrying them with you. As you go forward, uh, Nancy uh, Duarte just wants you to make, make you a better communicator, a better creative presenter. And she wants you to use your skills to persuade people to change the world. Go have an impact on everything you work with. And I hope you just take a lot of these techniques along with you. You know, you've worked on a few things. You've seen things that your classmates have done. This won't be your last chance to make a presentation. It's just your first chance here at Full Sail. So as you do other projects uh, and other classes at Full Sail, you'll have other chances to, to tell stories, to figure out ways to use media, to have an impact. And if you see what your classmates do and you find it um, uh, impacting and helpful, don't be afraid to steal it. You know, we're all here to learn from each other and to get better. So I want to talk for just a minute about personal branding. That's really the heart of what our presentation has been about. How do you talk about yourself and your skills? How do you refer to yourself as a product? How do you maintain your reputation? And um, this notion of brand is something that's very important at Full Sail. It's something that you'll hear about in lots of other classes. You're gonna get lots of other great information in future classes about how to work on and hone your brand, how to promote it, how to present it, how to protect it. And essentially when we say your brand, we're really talking about your reputation. In the digital world, it's quite often that there are people who know you by your works that you've never met and hear about you second and third hand. And oftentimes it's, it's hard to control your brand because other people are spreading information about it, sometimes not in the way you like. So uh, thinking about your brand and protecting the integrity of your brand is one of the things that you wanna just try to get a handle on it from the very beginning, because otherwise in the digital age, it can get away from you very, very fast. And one of the ways that we think about branding is we, we think about major corporations and what they do. And they're all about signage. We're not really concerned about logos or the way you present yourself uh, you know, uh, at your name or your, your company that you invent for yourself uh, on your, your, uh, your resume or anything like that. But we're concerned with something called a brand promise, meaning that what you stand for as you offer your skills to the world is a kind of uh, oath or, or covenant. And it matters what you say you will do and that you can keep that uh, oath. So a good way to think about that is to look at major companies and what their brand promises are, what, what their brands say they stand for. So, you know, Google is a good example. Google stands for reliable online service. You know, if you look at them as uh, an online brand, you know, uh, their uptime is 99.99%. You can expect them to be around. Uh, the Google site is, is never down. Uh, I was saying earlier today that uh, um, because this was one of the first day of school for a lot of places across the country, Zoom, the service we're using right now, actually went down. And I wasn't sure we were gonna have class today because uh, they had a major crash, you know, nationwide uh, because of demand. I mean, you know, Zoom has never been as popular as it is before. I mean, it's being used not just by us, uh, but it's being used by regular schools because of the, the, the uh, health crisis and so forth. So it taxes a company to its core you know, can you do what you're saying you do? You will do. And I really feel for Zoom that uh, sometimes success is a curse because when you have too much success, you can't fulfill your promise. And it's never occurred 
to Google that they've ever been too popular. Uh, whatever the world throws it at them, they're able to stand up and serve it. They have more capacity. They have more servers in the world. They have more programmers working to keep things online than the world is able to uh, conjure up to take them down. That doesn't mean Google's perfect. There are days that you know they've had, had uh, trouble and, and uh, parts of Google have gone down. But for the most part, you can rely on Google as an online service, an online service that's gonna give you search capabilities and lots of other tools. And they are uh, persistent. They are available. They are, uh, for the most part, free. They, they make plenty of money, uh, but they, they give free services uh, in exchange for your use of their uh, products and so forth. So that's their brand promise. Uh, lots of other companies have different brand promises. You know, Apple Computers doesn't promise to be the cheapest, but they promise to be the best. Their, uh, you know, their uh, fine luxury goods for the masses. Uh, Amazon promises an easy experience in searching. You know, they don't promise necessarily to have uh, the cheapest price, uh, but they they will make shopping so convenient that you don't care who else is doing what. That they will become your easiest place to buy goods and that in the long run, they will get the bulk of your business because they will take so much of the stress of online shopping away. Uh, and that is their brand promise that they will make it easy to buy and they keep that promise. So a brand promise is a service that you offer that is compelling that other people can't necessarily, um, uh, compete with and it's a promise that you're making to your customers that you're going to keep up that you're going to keep providing so maintaining that brand involves a little bit of work it means that you always have to uh tell the truth of what's happening to you you know uh i'm sure that it was embarrassing for zoom today to uh put out the press release that says their servers were going down. But if they denied that it was happening, it would have been worse for them. Uh, and, and in fact, what I hear is that after they went down early this morning, it was a two or three hours later that they were able to recover and, and that they've, they've been online for the rest of the day. So, you know, that's what a brand does. You stumble, you come back, you make amends. And in protecting your brand, you know, you want to be honest, you want to be unique, meaning you focus in on what it is that you do that others don't do. So in terms of, of figuring out your own brand, you may say, well, I want to be a computer animator. And there are lots of computer animators. But in the course of going to full sale, maybe you discover that your speciality is rigging. Maybe you can move... Um, you know, the uh, uh, move the, sc the spines of your characters in such a way that you can create more motion, that you can create more realistic animation than other people. Maybe other people draw better, maybe pe other people do better surface inking, but you, you know, you're the best rigger. Well, that's your speciality. That's what's unique. That's what's going to get you hired. Make sure you promote that. And a lot of times you come to school you're thinking you're going to be one thing, but school teaches you that you're the best at something else. When you're really good at something, make sure that becomes part of your brand. Make sure that's the part of you that you promote because that's the part that other people are going to want. So in protecting your brand, make sure you discover and you promote what's unique. And finally, don't compromise. As you put your work out into the future, uh, you know, it's an early, uh, artist or you know young artist you're going to want to always say yes to a situation just to get the job maybe you'll uh, pretend you have skills that you don't have or take a job for less than you should make money than you should be earning 
uh, it's important, especially in the early phase of your career, to learn to say no. Don't compromise because that's the only way that you're going to maintain your brand in the long run. And that's what you have to think about, that you, you aren't involved in just what's happening this moment. Well, what's going to be happening in my career for the next year, for the next five years, for the next 10 years? If you make a bad decision, is it something that you can recover from? So brand transparency is about maintaining your reputation, your word through what you have to do. And brand promise is discovering what you're really good at and making sure that you're offering that up to your customers. So for brand promise to be uh, useful, it has to be credible, it must come from a place of the heart, it must be authentic, it must be the thing that you really do. You, we, we wanted you to talk about your true self in this presentation. That means that's what your skill is that you're offering to the world. It has to have a, be a skill that the world wants. It must be a, a, have value or benefit uh, you know, to the people that you want to serve. You know, it's no good to say, well, I, I create really good stories that crack me up. You've got to make sure that everybody else is laughing as well. Uh, most importantly, promises are only good if they're kept. Your organization's storytelling becomes powerful storytelling when the brand clearly defined and is delivered on its promise. So a lot of these great corporations that you guys chose that you want to work for have great stories about themselves. Disney, Pixar, Blizzard, you know, they have created their own myths by doing the work that they promised they would do and keeping those promises. And you want to be as good as that. And so personal brand is about your skills melding with these kinds of, of other organizations. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a big organization, but your skill is what you have to offer and it's what you want to protect. So uh, you protect or you, you build yourself by uh, giving and receiving feedback. Again, that's what we're about this week. Uh, I'm giving everyone as much feedback as I can. Uh, sometimes I'm, you know, uh, I suggest things, but it doesn't mean that you have to do everything that I say. Part of giving and receiving feedback is meaning that you actually realize that this is your work and you're making the final decisions. So even though I might have an outsized voice as your teacher, if I ask you to do something, you still only should take it in as, as a comment, as an information. You have to evaluate whether it's important to do or not. Now, if I tell you you have to do something because it's part of the assignment, you know, and you choose not to do it, you're, you're, you're choosing not to do the assignment. So it's beyond ignoring me. But most of the time, the advice I'm giving you is just helpful advice that you could or could not use. So you need to consider the advice. Advice. People who give you feedback are trying to help you, most, for the most part. And uh, it's your job to evaluate that feedback and then decide whether or not it makes sense for you. So on a case-by-case -case basis, you're receiving that feedback and you're making an evaluation. You aren't just simply doing what everybody else says because it's not everybody else's project. It's, it's your project. You're in charge and you're making those final decisions. But if you're an open-minded artist, then you're open to feedback and feedback is about making you better. Most of these people are going to be making suggestions because they want your project to be better. You know, Obviously, if they find a mistake, you know, that there's no questioning that they're helping you. But if they're making an aesthetic choice, oh, you ought to make this blue when you, you think it's better brown, then that's your choice. You're basically, you know, just evaluating different people's choices. But you should take all this information in. 
And so um, we have rules for giving and receiving feedback. And I want to go through that really briefly here. Uh, the first rule for giving feedback is create safety. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean by that, that you should not seek feedback in every corner. There are places where people can be, and especially on the internet, can be anonymous and cruel, can be trolls. They say awful things just to say awful things. So I certainly would not take my project to Facebook or Reddit or some place where people like to make smart aleck comments and ask for honest feedback because I can't be trustful of the cohort, the crowd that is participating in that process. So you wanna seek feedback in zones of safety, in places where you know that everybody there has your best interest at heart, has, is not out to be cruel or, or uh, malicious. And certainly, uh, our discussion board is that. Our classmates are all treating each other with respect. No one's out to be mean or cruel. Uh, and when you get into the working world, uh, the place where you work is going to be the place of safety. And you want us to receive feedback, you're going to receive feedback from your colleagues and they'll have your back. So just basically, um, feedback needs to take place where you know that you can trust the people who are giving you um, that, that feedback to have your best uh, uh, um, have your have your um, welfare uh, at heart, and certainly if you're asking friends, you already know that they're trustworthy. So, but uh, you know, basically, uh, don't ask strangers unless you know what you get or you have a tough hide. Uh, second rule for giving feedback is be positive. Now that doesn't mean only say nice things. It means only say things that can change or matter. Don't give someone feedback on things that aren't relevant. Uh, and make sure that they're changeable, actionable items. You know, if, if, I, uh, if the topic of this project is to talk about your skills, then it wouldn't be good feedback for someone to say, well, you shouldn't talk about your skills because that's actually part of the project. Talk about the things that can and, and should change. Uh, and, and along with that, be specific. And what I mean by that is that if you look at someone's uh, slides and you say, I don't like that font, that's bad feedback. Not because you're wrong, it's that you haven't given that person any context for what to do about it. It is very true that you could might not like the font, but you have to be positive and specific, meaning that you have to tell them how they could change it, how they could make that better. So instead of saying, I don't like that font, you should say something like, I think your font is too thin. When you look at it from a, a far away, it's hard to read. You should use a thicker font or you should use a different typeface like universe bold. And in giving those specifics, you're allowing the person who's, who's receiving the feedback to have a, a very quick understanding of changes that they could make and how they could make them very fast. That's what feedback's all about. If you're offering, I mean, if you think that they should change something, tell them how to do it. Don't just uh, you know, give them a, um, a to-do list that they have to start all over with. Be very specific as you, if you can about the changes that ought to be made. And again, when it comes down to taste, you know, if you like this font and they like that font, then you know, that's uh, not necessarily something that's going to, to work out. But if you've got very clear reasons, like I think your font is too thin and people can't read it, or you're, it's, it's scaled too small and you know, it's not taking on enough of the screen and when somebody looks at it on a phone, on a four inch screen, it's gonna be too small. That's very, very good information. That's the kind of information people need. And you guys were very, very good in week two when you're talking to each other 
about hail, about the way people use their voice, about how they project and so forth. And that's a useful feedback. That's the kind of thing that people want and need to know to get better. Be immediate. Uh, it's no secret that we're on deadline here in this class, but I'm not really gonna spoil your life but to tell you that uh, if you're in the creative arts, you're probably gonna be on deadline for the rest of your life. Every project you make is gonna have a deadline and it's not gonna be an easy deadline. So when someone comes to you and asks you for feedback, if you can't participate then and there, you know, find out the time frame because there's nothing worse than receiving excellent advice after the fact, after it's too late and uh, uh, you can't do anything about it. So in this week, if you've put your project in the discussion board and you did it today or do it tomorrow, then uh, throughout the main part of this week, up until say Friday, that's a good time to give people feedback. Don't wait till Sunday night because it's gonna be too late. That's the bad time to give someone feedback because they, they, they're they already turning in their project. They don't have a chance to take mm -hmm. your great advice and deal with it. So make sure whenever anyone asks you for feedback that you worry about their deadlines and their timeline because all of us are in a hurry. And if they're asking you for advice, there's usually uh, a, um, a ticking deadline on that uh, advice to be had. Finally, provide tough love. Uh, we can all want to be nice to each other, but if someone's made a serious mistake, if they're completely off the reservation, did exactly the wrong thing, if they have to start over, if they uh, you know, seriously miss the boat, you're not doing them any favors by not letting them know. They're eventually going to have to start over. and uh, It's better to hear it from a friend, and it's better to hear it as soon as possible so they have more time to start over. Um, so you wanna give people feedback and if they're in the right direction, you're giving them small feedback. If they're in the wrong direction, let them know as much as you can about what they're doing wrong so that they can be started get, uh, fixing it as soon as possible. That's what tough love's about. Friends are better at telling people this than than strangers. Strangers are, you know, kind of are reticent to tell you the, the hard things because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Friends don't want to hurt your feelings either, but they can tell you in a way that it stings less. But if you made a big mistake, you made a big mistake. That's just the way it is. We are all, you know, big boys here and we're here to learn and go forward. So uh, if someone has to tell you uh, the hard truth, you'll be ready for it. But uh, it's going to be better coming from a friend. And if you're a friend, then you're going to deliver that tough love. So those are the rules for how to give feedback. You guys are all going to be receiving feedback. So the rules for that as well. And the first rule is cultivate a growth mindset. And what I mean by that is that you really are listening to everybody. There are often times where people ask for feedback they don't really want feedback, they want compliments. And the first time they start to get real feedback, they get defensive about it. And the worst thing is that if someone is giving you feedback and you jump in and cut them off, you know, maybe someone says, well, your audio sounds a little, uh, a little scratchy there at some point. And you jump in and say, yeah, that's not my fault. It's the microphone. I had a belly bad microphone. I'm really supposed to get one, but I don't have it. Blah, blah, blah. That may be very, very true. And that may be information that the other person needs to have. But the main information that other person got was you cut them off while they were talking. If someone is kind enough to give you feedback, then it's your job to stand there and listen until they finish their entire thought. Don't cut them off, don't be defensive and so many times when I see people uh, ask for feedback, before they allow anybody else to talk, they go through a long laundry list of things they know that's wrong with their project, as if you're sanitizing yourself against that advice. Uh, don't do that. 
um, for one thing, oftentimes people won't even notice those things that you're worried about. They wouldn't even have brought them up. But if they do, you don't want to seem defensive. What you want to do is be receptive to that advice. If you cut people off, you're telling them, we don't, I don't respect you. And the awful thing is that person will never give you advice again. So if someone is gracious enough to give you feedback, make sure you hear them out fully before you ever come back and respond. But if someone has said something and needs correcting, you know, um, that's a good chance for you to step up and talk about what happened. Sometimes it's a bonding moment. When you agree with their advice, you know, oftentimes then you can tell them a story of what happened. Uh, it means that you're both thinking in the right direction, so the same direction is right. But you first got to show that you respect that person giving you advice enough to let them say their full say. And it may not be great advice. It may not be advice that you should be taking. You know, it's your job to evaluate that advice. But it is also your job to be grateful for the, receiving the advice and let the other people have their full say before you ever um, change or mitigate what the statements are. Focus on self-improvement. Oftentimes, people look at things from their own perspective and they're gonna give you feedback on stuff that may not necessarily be relevant to what you're working on. And that's fine. That's just the nature of human beings having you know, different perspectives. For your purposes, when you ask for, for uh, feedback, uh, focus in on the aspects that are important to you. So you can re receive from feedback that subset that is the most relevant and that is the advice that you're looking for. And you can let the other stuff uh, just be information that resides in your head that you don't necessarily have to deal with. Just because someone mentions something doesn't mean you have to deal with it as feedback. You have to consider it. You have to be uh, aware that those choices are out there. Learn from criticism. Sometimes people are just gonna disagree. You know, you like blue and they like brown. Well, that's the way the world is. It's not necessarily um, a notion. I mean, unless you're in social marketing and someone's gonna say, well, you have to use blue because statistics say, you know, uh, this is what sells this market group, et cetera. You know, then it's based on uh, other factors, not based on personal choice. But criticism, if it's down to simply personal taste, uh, you want to listen to everybody, but you really want to listen to yourself. And finally, find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. We all want to help each other out. And so part of giving and receiving feedback is just celebrating the success that other people have and telling them that you think they're doing a great job and that they're inspiring you. So um, let's talk about the uh, presentation assignment that we have today. Um, the project is 4.3 and it involves some previous student projects. And in order to view it, you have to download the instructions PDF. So if anybody has been having problems with these PDFs, let me know. I'm actually gonna post later in the week in announcements these, these links that what I'm talking to you about. But if you open up the instruction sheet, oops, that was the rubric. Here we are. Uh, you'll see on page two, there are three links to YouTube videos that are student projects. Now there are, these are student projects that are pretty good but not perfect. We actually got permission from these students to use their projects, and you're gonna find a good range of variety here. So you'll see um, uh, different uh, types of student projects uh, and, and whatnot. I want you to watch all three, but you just need to pick one, and you're going to give that one project some good advice. So uh, let's take a look at one of them. I'll just pick number two at random. 
I am authentic, passionate. I am an innovator. I am a digital marketer. My name is Emily Sanders. In life, we go through defining moments. So you can see that this is a presentation. It has, um, you know, this step through slide feel to it. Uh, each one is slightly different. Uh, the first one is much more sort of. Uh, my name is Louis Soto. And at the age of 15, I began wanting to follow my dream goals as a digital cinematographer. So this one's sort of biographical. Uh, and the third one is uh, a little more personal. As someone who has worked professionally in the music industry from the age of 16, I have become proficient in the art of falling forward. My name is T-Ray Armstrong. I'm a professional musician, a songwriter, a multi-instrumentalist, and a producer. So I want you to watch all three of these videos. Pick one, and then uh, this assignment is a little bit like uh, week one's uh, TED Talk assignments. You're just going to write a couple of paragraphs about it. So we have a couple of questions we want you to answer. These are prompts. What specifically did you like about the presentation? Which part of the presentation was the most difficult to follow? Explain. So you're basically just giving us your critique of how you think they did on their project. Based on what you learned and created a presentation this month, what advice have you for this presenter? So this is the most important part. I want you to give this student some reusable, credible advice. Look at the project and tell us, tell that student what you think they could do to make the project better. Should they add more slides? Should they redo the audio with you know certain kind of hail? Should they add a section on such? Should they tell the story in a different way? You know, it's up to you to offer advice. But as you're looking at what they're doing and you're critiquing on it. How do you honestly think that uh, you could give them advice to help make it better? So I'm looking for an actionable change from each one of you about uh, the one of the projects that you choose. Again, there are three different projects. You only have to pick one. I'm just looking for one or two paragraphs where you, you tell me these answers here. What techniques, skills, qualities from the course materials did this presentation exemplify? So I just want you to, you know, analyze the project. Tell me a little bit about what you think about it. Uh, here's a here's a little curveball from last week. Which of the three pillars does this represent presentation appeal to? Ethos, pathos, logos. Tell us why. So you know, just basically as you're watching us, tell us how you think this student did. And you're just writing this up in a text file. There don't need to be any pictures. There doesn't need to be any special to do about it. You can actually even create this in the feedback box of um, the, the, the page here. I'd prefer it if you just made a document, but you can, you can type it in any way you want. Uh, it's best to make a text file and upload it, but you can actually just write it in the text in the feedback box if you want it. And remember there's the final third step after your analysis, add a final paragraph reflecting upon your thoughts about feedback. How might this process inform your critique and feedback process about your own work? So basically tell us how you think feedback would make your own work better. So that's a third paragraph that I want you to add. I want you to give me two paragraphs on the one of these three student films that you liked, you picked. You don't need to do all three, just pick one. Talk, tell me about that. Make sure there's some actionable advice in there, some feedback. And then finally, a little paragraph about your thoughts about feedback and what it might mean for you. That is the 3.4 project in a nutshell. Uh, it shouldn't take you more than uh, 15 or 20 minutes altogether to do it. And it's not due until Sunday night. So everything is due Sunday night. That's when the class is going to close. Uh, you have until um, Sunday night at midnight to get all of these things done. Uh, and especially what we're doing here is finishing our 4.4. So based on the feedback that you receive from me, from your classmates, from yourself, what are you doing to 
to make a final draft. Well, the only thing that's really changed in the final draft, you cannot turn in exactly the same file. So even if I gave you 100 and said you did a perfect job on your 4.3 or your 3.4, you have to change it to some degree. You cannot turn in the same file. You have to, you have to alter and improve the project somewhat. Now, a lot of you, if you turned in projects that are partial or uh, you know, turned in your audio separate from your video or your, your presentation deck and all that, you know, certainly integrating those things, making those changes, finishing the slides, adding more slides if I ask you to, those are the changes that you're going to make. So what we want from you in this final version this week when you turn it in, is we want to you know, make sure that it's self-running. Uh, if you're using PowerPoint or some tool like that, I don't want to click to engage audio. I don't want to click to advance slides. You know, if you're doing a Prezi or something like that, I don't want, I want it to play automatically. I don't want to have to advance the next slide, slide by slide. We want this to be self-running for the audience. And the very best way to do that is to export this as a movie. If you're doing this in Adobe Spark or something like that, it already exports it as a movie. That's a terrific way to make sure that the project is self-running. Let's go ahead and make it a movie. PowerPoints can export as a movie as well. Uh, and then you can even upload it to YouTube. Uh, there's no requirement to upload to YouTube, but uh, there's an advantage to it. Um, basically, as a, a student, you're storing your work on Google servers. You're, you know that they're reliable. Uh, and as you go through school, when you finish a project, it's very good to get it off your phone, off your laptop, off your, uh, your, your tablet, and into a cloud service that can store it for you. Uh, for instance, if you make an Adobe Spark file and it's really good, uh, as an MPEG-4, it's probably three or 400 megabytes. So if you wanted to share that with somebody, awful tough to send it an email, awful tough to, to tweet it out or, 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 or send it to somebody very anytime quickly. But if you put that same project on YouTube, even if you didn't want, want to share it publicly with the world, you can actually set your YouTube projects up just to be private. But you can still share them out at your own uh, you know, personal pleasure. But if you were to run into somebody really quickly and you wanted to show them your work, you could then give them a URL to look at that very quickly uh, and it would be frictionless. It wouldn't involve you uploading lots of material. It wouldn't involve you going and searching for where it was. Storing your work on YouTube is a great way to keep your stuff ready as a portfolio piece at all times. And even if you didn't want to make it public, you'd have it there for yourself anyway. So uh, that's just a suggestion. You don't have to put it on YouTube, but I think that it's a good suggestion and it's useful for most of you. But uh, certainly putting it into movie form means that it's self-running. You don't have to put it in movie form. If you want to turn in your PowerPoint file as a PPTX, that's perfectly acceptable. But I want to make sure that when I open it up and hit play or hit run, that the audio is automatically playing. It's going to run through the slides. It's going to it's going to advance itself, and I don't have to do anything else but set and watch that show. That's what we mean by self-running. So we want you to, to finalize this, put in all your changes, uh, make it self-running, turn it in by Sunday. And one last thing, we want you to give us what we call a changes document, which means a short text file with a list of the changes you made. You could turn this in as a separate file. I don't want it in the actual project itself. It doesn't belong there. This is an external, external document, but it's just a, a short text file. Talk about whatever you did to change it this week. I added slides, I shortened the audio, I changed the narrative. Whatever you wanted to do to make it better, just put it down in a few words and give us that changes list as well. That's part of what we're asking you to turn in as your final project and you can you can you can put that in the feedback as uh, if you wish. So if you turn in your your file, you can put it in the completion box, and then you can just add 
three or four lines of what you changed in feedback, I'll see it there and I'll recognize that you turned it in. You can also put it in as a separate text document. That's really the best. Then I'll have both files together as downloads. But uh, that's the last thing we want you to do. And then there is one final uh, project called Portfolio Competency Self-Reflection. Uh, and this is basically you thinking about what this class meant to you, what you thought it was going to be versus what it turned out to be, how you think you did. So just uh, your own thoughts. This is not a required assignment. You're not going to get a grade for this, but we do ask you to fill it out. So um, it won't take very long, but it should be the very last thing you do. Uh, and filling this out helps us make the class better on Fly Month. So uh, that's really what we're asking for this week. Uh, we want you to turn in the, the presentation uh, uh, feedback uh, text file. Shouldn't take you more than 15 or 20 minutes altogether uh, after you watch the, uh, the student films on YouTube. We want you to turn in your finished final project or your, uh, your branding project. And we want you to, to do the self-reflection if you can. And all that's due by Sunday midnight. If you need more time, let me know. I can give you an extension beyond that. So for most of you, the class is gonna end at midnight. So uh, I should talk for a second about what's gonna happen. Um, basically, as soon as this class closes on Sunday night at midnight, then Monday morning at 12.01 a.m., your next class opens up. For most of you, your next class is called uh, PYP, the Psychology of Play. And it's a psychology class that deals with work-play balance. Uh, for those of you that have been looking for help with time management, this class will certainly help with that. Uh, it looks at psychological processes uh, through gameplay. So those of you that are interested in you know, designing better games by figuring out the mental processes people go through. You're going to find that pretty fascinating. So in and all, it's a very different class from this. But it's a very cool class. And I think a lot of you are going to enjoy it a huge amount. And that class starts as soon as this class ends. You'll be able to access that class from your Full Sail One page, where the way you access this class this month. And for a time, both classes are going to be available. You'll have access to this class after it closed for about two weeks. So if you want to come back and turn in work late or look at your grades or do it, deal with anything else, you'll have access for about two weeks. And then it goes away. Basically, when your grades get finalized, your, uh, your access to this class ends. Uh, but the next class is there and, the, and so forth. So that's the way it goes. Just as soon as one class ends, the next class begins. And if you know that, then sometimes it's helpful to finish your week four work as early as possible. To give yourself a little break, a little spacer. You know, um, If you need to, you can work up till midnight finishing uh, the week four project. But when you have a brand new class that's opening the next day, you don't want to have any leftovers if you can. You want to go ahead and get that done with. And if you can get it done any earlier, then you're giving yourself a free weekend. Um, and that's the start of a good work process, a good work habit. And again, these classes are four, month, four weeks long. They run through very quickly. Uh, the full cell pace is suddenly going to become part of your life rhythm and uh, figuring out a way to make sure you've got all the um, school study time that you need uh, out of your own personal schedule while you're working and watching your kids and doing your jobs and doing all the other th million things that you guys do, you know, make sure you, you get those study uh, patterns in place so that you can get through uh, these classes month after month. And that's the process here. You guys have started the long journey. You've got a way to go but you're on your path to becoming, you know, full sale graduates with all kinds of great skills. And I think you're gonna have a great path here. Uh, I've enjoyed starting you guys out on that path. And uh, I want you to 
keep coming back to me if you need advice or help along the way. I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys can, uh, turn out. I've been uh, excited to be your teacher, and I think there are great things in store for you. So uh, that's it for today. Anybody have any questions for me? Uh, and then I better open the chat box. I've never uploaded to YouTube. Is it safe? I assume. Yes. Uh, basically, Google gives everyone on YouTube their own private account. And it's basically your Google credentials. So if you've ever had Gmail, you actually already have a, uh, a YouTube account. But uh, you have to sign up with Google uh, and, and get Google credentials and whatnot. But then they give you your own space. And you, when you post stuff, you actually tell them whether it's public or private. If it's private, nobody else sees it but you. So it's just your own personal place to keep large honking files. Uh, but it's a great way to deal with video uh, because video is um, something you're gonna be dealing with more and more. And it, it's a huge hoggy resource on your own computer. And the more you can offload it onto a place like uh, YouTube, the better off you are. Another nice thing about YouTube is that they compress it for everybody else. So it becomes a file that other people can read uh, and, and they do that work on their servers. It doesn't have to happen on your machine. Um, anybody else have any questions for me? Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys go. It's been an honor being a teacher. You guys have a great career here at Full Sail. Good night, everybody.